guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the coronavirus, how wildlife markets have contributed towards this virus, and how wildlife markets might mean the actual end of humankind. I know that sounds dramatic, I'm going to explain it a bit more. And as well as answering some other questions like why does Asia specifically have so many of these zoonotic diseases, and my thoughts on the wildlife ban that is currently in place in China. If you guys are new to my channel, I'm a wildlife biologist. If you're interested in hearing more perspectives from a wildlife biologist, click the subscribe button down below to see more videos from my channel. So I'm gonna start with the basics. You probably already know quite a bit just from the amount of coverage this virus has gotten on the news. Coronaviruses. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. COVID-19. The World Health Organization now admits we are on the precipice of a pandemic. But coronavirus, what I'm referring to as coronavirus, is actually the name of a virus in the coronavirus family called COVID-19. This virus has hopped from animal to human, and I'm going to talk about that a bit more later, but is currently infecting humans to a very large extent all around the world. At the time that I'm filming this, 73,000 humans have been sickened and over 2,000 people have died from the coronavirus. Symptoms are including shortness of breath, coughing, fever, tiredness, and sore throats. And it's spread by small droplets that come out of your mouth when you're sneezing or coughing or blowing your nose. And the worst and saddest part of it is there's currently no cure. The virus came from a wildlife market in Wuhan, China. So a wildlife market is basically a large market where wildlife live and dead are their parts and their full live bodies are traded, sold for human consumption, for traditional medicine. So there are these large markets where there are so many animals interacting in a very, very small space. An example of some of the species that you're going to see in a typical wildlife market in China, and this comes from only one stall in China had the following animals, peacocks, rats, foxes, crocodiles, wolf cubs, turtles, snakes, wild pigs, and more, all in just one stand at a wildlife market. The suspected ground zero of the outbreak was also dealing in legal and illegal trade and consumption of exotic wildlife. A lot of animals from all over the world in these tiny cramped cages, stressed, uh, anxious, scared, the ones that are alive or the ones that are dead, their bodies being held in not the most sanitary conditions. The cages do not get changed and the poop is allowed to circulate. So you are breeding the ultimate virus that one day will adapt well to the animals that are there that one day will adapt to the humans that keeps coming in contact. And all of this chaos going on with thousands of people or hundreds of people interacting with these animal bodies or the live animals. That's the perfect storm for these super viruses to emerge and spread from animal to human. So does eating wildlife cause disease? Yes. We still don't know at the time that I'm recording this which animal actually was the one that caused the jump from animal to human and what was the original carrier of COVID-19. It's speculated that pangolins are the animal that had the disease originally. There's been so much pseudoscience and rumors flying around on this. There's people, videos of people eating bats and they were saying bat soups were the cause of the virus and you know the reality is is right now we do not know the exact animal because there were just so many animals at the Wuhan market that were being sold. Pangolins are scaly anteaters. Pangolins are the world's most trafficked mammal and that's primarily because their scales are used in traditional medicine in many countries. They are actually protected domestically in China and the trade of them is barred internationally. However, there is so many smugglers out there smuggling animal parts that there is pangolin scales coming in from all over the world. So right now it's currently speculated that pangolin scales are what caused the virus to jump from animal to human. Next I want to quickly touch on why Asia in particular is such a huge hot spot and origin spot for zoonotic diseases. So biodiversity loss and deforestation in Asia is leading to an increased um, interaction with humans and wildlife. Um, if wildlife are normally in these large 
remote areas, there's less interaction of wildlife that are in remote areas with humans. But if deforestation is causing the animals to pile up in one little hot spot of an area, and all around that hot spot are domestic cattle or human civilization, there's going to be much more of an increased interface between humans and animals along those deforested areas. When there's increased interaction with humans and wildlife, there's a higher potential that zoonotic diseases are going to spread from wildlife to human. Men and these animals, we are not meant to be living side by side. Viruses like this exist in wildlife. You put the situation of man and wildlife together in this kind of situations for a protracted period of time, these things can happen. And I think, you know, we are just tempting fate. Large percentage of species in Asia are seen as dietary sources or traditional medicine. So they, there's a lot more um, exotic animals being traded in and out of Asia. The SARS epidemic actually was quite similar to this. It came out of a wildlife market where people were consuming an animal known as the palm civet, which is a cat-like organism. When I bring up cultural differences, I think it's incredibly important to talk about the racism that is going on when this coronavirus epidemic started and something that's been going on every single time one of these diseases comes out of Asia. That's the association of people across Asia with eating these weird exotic animals and blaming them for why we are getting diseases. I just want to give you some food for thought and that's a terrible phrase to use right now, but is the US so different with our weird animal consumption? A common ingredient in supermarket bread? l -cystinine? It's made from human hair from hair salons in China, ground up and put into our bread. Vanilla, strawberry, and raspberry flavorings is often made from the anal gland secretions of beavers. In every liter of milk, the USDA allows 750 million pus cells. Swine flu and bird flu are also major epidemics that started with domestic animals and the interaction of humans with domestic animals. China has a long way to go with animal rights issues. It's misguided to put all of the blame on Asia when there is so much animal consumption going on in the Western world. So China has set a ban on wildlife as a food source and it restricts the trade and the importation of wildlife as food. However, it does not ban wildlife for being used as fur, traditional medicine, and research. This creates a loophole for traffickers, especially when so many of these animals are used for traditional medicine. It creates a loophole for traffickers where they just say that it's not being used for food consumption. China has since banned the popular wildlife trade until the health crisis is over. There are also increasing calls from the international scientific community for the ban to be made permanent. Traffickers are estimated to smuggle about 1 million animals per day. If this continues, we are going to see so many worse diseases than just COVID-19. The chance of another jump from animals to humans is incredibly high when we're seeing this volume of animals smuggled daily. In 2003, the SARS epidemic triggered a similar ban on wildlife and then the wildlife trade just jumped right back up as soon as the ban was lifted. These bans are not known to be effective. At this point, it's not going to have much impact on the actual spread of the disease because now it's spreading from person to person. A ban is a good step in the right direction though. I, I feel like I'm coming at this situation really similar to how I was talking about the plastic straw ban. It's a step in the right direction, but it's not everything. It's not going to significantly change the amount of diseases that we're going to get that come from animals. As long as we keep eating wildlife and we keep using them as resources, we keep burning our forests, we keep destroying these habitats, we are going to get more and more disease. All coronavirus videos are actually being demonetized by YouTube, which I don't agree with. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to support me and my time making this video, uh, go ahead and check out my coffee page below where you can donate a few bucks and buy me a coffee. That would be much appreciated. Thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you next time.